Hi, my name is Griff, and welcome to Animal Behavior Explained. Today, we're going to be going over Tim Bergen's four questions. Once you have made the decision to study animal behavior, you might have a few specific questions on a particular behavior that you would want to investigate. Since behavior is complicated and the result of several different levels of being from the cellular to the species and beyond, finding the right way to frame your question can help you in developing your research. Luckily for us, back in 1963, Nicolas Tinbergen, one of the founders of ethology alongside Conrad Lorenz and Carl von Friss, wrote a paper called On the Aims and Methods of Ethology. This paper established four types of questions to ask when researching animal behavior. And these four question types are still used today as guidelines for developing questions and hypotheses for animal behavior research. The four questions are function. Why is the animal performing this behavior? How does performing this behavior increase an animal's chances of survival? Evolution. How has a behavior evolved? How has evolution modified this behavior over time? Causation. What causes the behavior? What stimuli or physiological methods cause the behavior to be performed? Development. How has the behavior developed over an animal's lifetime? And how has different events in that animal's lifetime changed the performance of that behavior? The questions can be divided into two categories, proximate and ultimate. Proximate being those focused on the immediate benefits to an animal, and ultimate, which focuses on the advantages for the species as a whole. An easy way to define it is proximate is how the behavior is performed, and ultimate is why the behavior is performed. So let's briefly look at one behavior from all four angles. The meowing of Felis catus, or the domesticated cat. Function. How does meowing benefit cats? Meowing is usually reserved for mother and her kittens as a way of verbal communication between the two. But as a result of domestication, meowing remains a important way for cats to communicate with their slaves. I mean, owners. Their, their owner. Evolution. Why did cats evolve to meow? Like I said before, it's a great way of verbal communication between mother and kitten. Causation. How do cats meow? The meow is produced by an open mouth slowly closing. It is a high-pitched call, usually consisting of a series of two syllables with I or E quality. The first vowel sound is raucous, and the second is higher in pitch, more tonal, enhanced by the resonant properties of the vocal tract, with a slight frequency modulation. The sound often includes atonal features and garnishment, some sound around the principal sound, that would allow a modification of the message by the sender. Development. When and how does meowing develop? Cats can meow as soon as they're born, so it's safe to say that the mechanisms for meowing developed in utero, or in the womb. So, at the end of the first trimester, the larynx, bronchi, and lungs can be discerned. Over the next days, 21 to 23, the upper lip is formed. The face develops. Tongue and palate are formed. 25 to 28 days, the head develops cheeks, a chin, a nose, a mouth. You can pretty much do this with any animal behavior, looking at all four types of questions and seeing how does this behavior benefit an animal or its species. Of course, you're not bound to one type or another when you go forward with your research. Questions can look at both proximate and ultimate causes. However, breaking it down in this way helps to streamline research, especially when you're a small undergrad who has no idea what they are doing. Anyway, that was a very, very brief explanation of Tim Bergen's four questions. If you want to look at some people who have done a little more research on it, I've linked some things down below, some papers, including Tim Bergen's original On the Aims and Methods of Etiology paper. So with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.